Hi guys, welcome back to your Not So Ordinary Scrapbook channel. Um, <clears throat> this morning's agenda was to, um, on my schedule, was to um, do page kits. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, I'm going to break apart these two page kits and I'm going to put them in my... Um, these plastic folders that mean that they're on deck to use next. Um, I have five of them. They are from Creative Memories. I don't know this stuff can come out. I guess I have these like labeled at one point in time and you can do that. There's a, there's a space in the tab if you, if you know what kind of, um, scrapbooking, um, page you want to do with it and then you can kind of see um, because they're like file folder tabs um, and these just said like winter fall boys so um, but I'm just taking those out now um, most of my page kits are pretty random can be used um, for anything some of them are themey um, seasonal birthday wedding, that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> but most of them can be used with, for any, um, sort of photo. So, um, I have to try to keep this as short as possible because I'm watching Jensen today. So, um, I need to get this done before they bring him over. Um, so let's start with the paper. Um, these page kits look rather small, so when I put these together, I must have intended for them to um, <clears throat> be used as just one at a time. So I may be using these big ones up, and then I'll be able to make some more next um, Wednesday when I do page kits again. Um, so I have these scraps and a tag and I'm just going to stick those in there. Um, some butterflies. This also gives me a chance to kind of look and see what was in these page kits that I built a while ago. So like when I put them in the iris container, I am putting them in here to, um, because I know that it is a kit that I can pull from. I could just scrapbook from the iris container, but this way I can always make sure that I have a bunch to pull from, and then I know that these are on deck. So these are the first ones that I need to use. So I do have some older memorabilia. I have some scrap papers that I can use. Page, some other ephemera. So when I put this initial kit together, which is on video, on the past video, um, I tried to match everything as closely as possible. Um, I stuck enamel dots in here, so we're all ready with that. I thought these were bigger kits than what they were, but I, apparently they're not. So I may go through these quite quickly, which is not a bad thing, to be honest. Be able to kill a, kill a kit super quick. So there is one, one on deck. And what I do with my on deck ones is I just stick it beside I filed them beside my um, cardstock that is color coordinated, and then I can just pull from there as I pull a kit out. And then I just close up my iris container. Oh, there's one more piece. Oh, it looks like another enamel dot, too. So I just close this up, and then I know that that one's empty for another page kit. So I'm going to stick this in here. 
I don't know why. These are all wanting to tilt in the wrong direction. Okay. So let's see how big this page kit is for the second on deck one. I'm not sure. This looks like a Disney themed one. Because it's got Goofy's Diner. Let's see what the background. There's only one background paper in here. So that's not bad. We've got Goofy's Diner, which is at um, um, <clears throat> Hollywood Studios. And then there's this where I can like write an itinerary. So this will definitely be a Disney page. Disney themed page, I should say. We've got some tracks. We've got some scrap paper. Some other scraps. My goal is to use up the scrap paper. That is, I love to scrap scrapbook with my little scraps because I feel like I'm using them up and that makes me happy <laughs> I love it when I can use like all my scraps we got washi tape we've got some things that I've made previously I don't know if I should put these washi tapes in here. Kind of makes it bulky. Here. It's definitely a lot of ephemera in this one. We've got enamel dots. Some yellow enamel dots. So, of course, all this is not going to go on one layout. There's no way that it could possibly going one layout. Um but we're just gonna pick and choose and one fun thing that I like to do is after I've used this original page like this is double sided so I could actually do two layouts per I think the other one's double sided too. It is so I can actually challenge myself to do two, two layouts from this kit. Just one on each side. And that makes me happy. Because generally, if one side of the paper coordinates with embellishments, the other side generally coordinates as well uh, in some way, um, just because they want you to be able to use both sides if you want to. So um, that is that, and we can clearly see Goofy's Diner, so I'm not even going to put that as a Disney page. So that's two empty iris containers. And so far we've got two on deck. Let's see if um, let's see if I need three more. So let me pull three more bins, three more iris containers, I should say. video isn't too dark. Um, my light has burned out. Um, in my ceiling fan and it's an enclosed light and I don't know if it's a specialty light because we've never really changed the light bulb. 
in this ceiling fan before than I know of, but I'm assuming that it just like unscrews cause, cause the light is internal inside the fan. Um, but we'll just have to see, but I didn't have time to mess with it this morning. So I am just gonna, um, mess with it later. I don't know if I'll get to it today, but I'll get to it tomorrow if I don't get to it today. So I'm just setting aside the washi tape and yep, these are one page two. I don't know if it's double sided. We've got blue and pink, two sides of that. That's definitely Felicity Jane. And then we have this and this for scrap paper. Let's get these in here. Get that in there. And then we have some embellishments. This one could be any theme really. It's just pinks. There's some jammies. Some other little embellishments. This could be baby girl. And um, there's some little floral enamel pieces. Um, I could do this with a picture of Esme. Um, we'll see about that. Um, got some of these enamel dots, more of those, so I can do two of these, two layouts with this, probably, I'm guessing. With only three pictures of Esme so far, I can't exactly <laughs> create a, a um, baby book yet. Um, we're still waiting on her lawyer. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. I'm hopeful, hopeful that Hunter stopped by last night, but I was already in bed. He brings Ethan home from work, but... It's always after I go to bed, so I um I am not awake to talk to him and find out what happened. Um I know when he tried to meet with him on Monday they were out of the office for the whole day. Um so I'm not exactly sure what's going on right now, but we are just waiting to find out uh, what the next step is or how long it's going to take or if she's going to get all, she already kind of told Hunter in a text that what he wanted wasn't going to fly with her, but we already knew that. Nothing, nothing we do is going to fly with her. She... She wants complete control over the whole situation, which, you know, I get, but I don't get. I get because as a mother, I, I understand, um, at least I'm trying to understand what it's like to have to share your child with someone, but she's had to do this before. I mean, this isn't something new. I mean, when you have children with people that you are not married to, you're going to have to share custody. It just is, you know, unless the father doesn't want to. But in most cases, the father wants to have a relationship with their child. So I'm thinking that, you know, she should 
she should be more understanding of this process. Um, but I still, in I understand with, you know, babies being little, it's, it's hard. It's hard to, it's hard to trust, you know, where your children are going, especially if you don't feel that you know the people well enough or, you know, but there's no reason to get nasty about it. I mean, you get to know them and whether you decide that you like them or not. I mean, I think she made up her mind that she didn't like us be well before we even ever met Esme. She had no intention. I think that a lot of this is just a stall tactic um, because she bonded with us right away. Um, and I know that she doesn't care that I have a degree um, and like, this is my field, <laughs> you know, this is my profession. So it's like, like, I know she doesn't care about that or whatever. I don't know what her past experience has been in school and it could be negative. So I'm trying to have an open heart as far as that goes. But, um, it's just, it's just kind of ridiculous. The whole thing is ridiculous as far as I am concerned, just because, you know, there's no reason why, you know, we're going to, we love, we love her. We're not going to let anything happen to her. We, none of us are, you know, criminals or anything like that. None of us have a, a criminal record or you know, we've all worked in situations where we've taken care of children. I mean, even Hunter, you know, he has helped me for years do respite care. Um, Scott as well. Scott is very good with kids. Um, Ethan is good with kids. It's like, there's no reason for it. She, she would be safe here. I mean, my house is, is predominantly situated for children. So we have toys, we have, we have all the equipment that we need, um, to have a baby in our home. And I, there just it really is no reason for her attitude other than she is paranoid and and fearful probably that she could lose her child which that is not our intention um right now anyway I mean we I know as a as a professional that the best place that, um, for a, for a child to be is with both parents. Um, it's best for their development. Um, if they have a stable environment to, you know, whether the parents are married or not, it really doesn't matter. It's just that the care that's provided needs to be stable on both ends. Um, on her end, I'm not sure that it's so stable because they've been couch hopping a lot um, um, since she was little just because she was hiding from the court um, because she didn't want us to find her. Um, and she didn't want, she didn't want paternity. She didn't want Hunter to go after paternity. And so, you know, a lot of this has been a lot of hiding, a lot of, a lot of stuff that um, probably shouldn't, wasn't stable for any of her kids, um, much less our granddaughter. But, um, I don't know. I, I, you know, I, right now it seems like her kids are 
pretty well taken care of. I mean, her kids seemed clean, although I did get head lice from Esme. But I already knew that her daughter had head lice um, from her other grandma. Her other grandma had informed me that she had head lice when she saw her. Um, so I kind of figured that Esme had head lice. But then when I got it visiting her, um, that was pretty pretty obvious, not to mention the fact that I saw her mom picking it out of her hair one day. Um, so, but that's, you know, that's something that kids bring home from school. I'm not going to like, um, I'm not going to attack her for that. Um, but so only time I'll tell, just waiting for God to direct the situation. Um, I'm confident that, you know, the judge is going to see it Hunter's way just because Hunter has been the model father. He has never, he's never done anything to, you know, he just has never done anything. He doesn't drink. He doesn't smoke. He doesn't, he's a good kid. He you know, he's never abused her, never threatened her, never, he's been, you know, a model father, but she just wants to maintain control, which in a way I understand as a mother, but in a way I don't understand because it's obvious that Esme loves us and she should get to know us. I don't want to be the type of grandparent that raises my granddaughter that or any of my grandchildren for that matter. I love having them here. I love spending time with them, but I also love sending them home. Um, I'm at an age where I like to do things on my own. I like to, you know, it's kind of the same reason why um, I chose teaching as a profession is because, you know, you get to spend your time with kids at school and you get to send them home and you get your summers off and you get to watch all these little young minds bloom and blossom and grow. And, you know, nobody becomes a teacher for the money that I know of. I mean, I've never met any teachers that, that, um, choose this profession for the money. I never have. So, um, it's just because we love kids. We love kids and we want to see them grow and develop normally. And there's a lot of homes out there that do not foster that. And the only place they have to go to is school. And school is where they can receive what they need. And that's my reason why. So, um, but so this is probably a very short video. Um, I did that a lot faster than what I thought I was going to, but now I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five empty iris containers that I can make page kits out of next Wednesday. So, um, yeah, that's pretty exciting. Um, tomorrow I am going to bake something. Um, I'm thinking it's probably going to, well, I'm not even going to say because I'm thinking about, I'm researching a couple different recipes. So, um, but I will see you in the next video tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye.